Okay, so today we continue with our kids uh, Shulchanor class. Today is class number 28. So before we start, I want to uh, answer a little about what, uh, what you asked me before, be about this rebuke and stuff like that. So I want to be on camera. So on Friday, Friday. So this uh, so-called rabbi, and he, he has, he, has uh, uh, he, he connected uh, in, a, in a, his, uh, I, I, I don't want to say too much, but basically he's uh, from very important family. Very, very important family. And I yeah. tell you what, one of his, uh, it's he actually his, uh, one of the, his great, great grandfather is actually wrote this Kishu Shachonora. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this rabbi, right, sent on Friday email. He said, it's so easy, you must do it. I, I thought to myself, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know, what, whatever, maybe a little mitzvah. It's easy to do it. So play, it's, it's good to, to do it, right? So he said, no, no, you, you have to, there is an organization, APEC. Mm -hmm. APEC, APEC, not I, I, APEC. So it's like uh, uh, this organization, pro-Israel pro organization. Mm -hmm. So the, the CEO is make I checked, $1.6 million salary. I think it's good salary. You no, know, all others, like... Some of the, um, I, I don't think any, any of them are uh, Shomer Shabbos. I don't think, they, they don't look like, no mm -hmm. keepers, right? Some of the Christians. So Christian donate many, many, uh, a lot of money to the, to, to the, to the organization. They, they're interested in Eretz Israel because of the Yoshke stuff. And they, of course, they get elected to the board. So these uh, uh, reform people and these, um, these other people, not, not, not Jewish. So now they're trying to, uh, to bless, uh, uh, America wanted to sell uh, this bomb to Israel and two senators, whatever senators, Rishayim, one of the Jew, of course, he, they trying to block it. So this rabbi said, everything we have to do is just sign up, sign up on this website, give them your name, and that you uh, you you, for, you give your voice to stop this block. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he said, so easy, please take. Like I was like, you serious? You call yourself rabbi? You, you, you told everybody, you, you're proud, you, you were, were to meet Yeshiva. It's the, one of the best Yeshiva in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and he saw, actually, he saw the original Mir Yeshiva that came from the one, to, I don't know if you know the story, from, from the world, uh, the, the war, World War War. They went to China uh, and they were scared of the Japanese and they survived on the miracle. So basically, all of them, I, I'm not sure how many, 40 people, I know, I'm not sure, like Tzadikim, pure Kiddushim, like all of them, all of them that survived and then Hashem uh, saved them. And uh, this person actually went and learned with these people. I don't know how for some, but, but he's very proud. He, he tells the story about the Manai, Bitachon, and he says everything we have to do. So forget about Teshuva, forget, forget about Hashem. He's not happy. He said, if we're going to have this missile, this bomb, so basically we're okay. And what, what, what do we have to do? Do we have to pray? Do we have to do that? No, no, we don't have to do any of it. We just to have sign up for, for this Christian slash reform, and they're going to take care of uh, take care of it, and that's it. And today he, he's announced, he said, Rabbatai was, whoa, whoa, somebody died, Mashiach came, whoa. Like in the middle of the prayer, it's like, whoa, whoa what's going on? He said it's actually, block was removed, and they approved multi-million dollars uh, uh, sale of, uh, of the bomb. So that's uh, just answer to your question. Maybe it was a long answer, but that's what's going on in communities. So, you, uh, so kosher people cannot count on these rabbis. Basically, they are just, uh, I don't know, the, all of them that to, turn, I don't know, like, no Hashem, bombs are going to protect us. Hashem, not so much. That's for sure. You understand? So, and, uh, okay, so basically to, to, to ask the, uh, uh, the, this rabbi and ask him uh, why you why don't rebuke. No, no, he said that, no, no, he knows. I said, how do you know? He knows. He does not. If he continues doing this, he does not. No, no, he said, I don't rebuke. I don't rebuke. I don't rebuke. That's it. So basically, that's that's what it is. So, so to, to, to search for the truth, whatever you read in the book and now you see in the light apl applicable. So basically, we, we have to do like one person at a time approach. Mm -hmm. show, show, show in the book. That's mm -hmm. what I learned. That, that's what that, that's CD. Go check check the and these people they learn exactly. I mean I mean there is one part. Maybe they have different copy, but if they if you read exactly the same Torah, it's, it says exactly opposite what they said. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Very, very unfortunate, but that's a long answer to your question. So we're on page 98, and today we continue, we continue with Sefer Hafiz Chaim. And uh, today's topic, Los and Hara, Laws of Harmful Speech, uh, Harming the Wicked. Mm -hmm. We have seen that it's permissible to speak disparagingly uh, concerning a Russia. Uh, with regards to potentially harmful speech, it is obvious that one may not say anything that could cause physical harm, financial or uh, psychological harm to any person unless the Torah permits harming him. Just as it is forbidden to steal from a sinner, so too it is forbidden to speak about him in any way that uh, could cause him financial loss. Okay. So that's uh, so about Rashid, so it, uh, you, you can speak up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all, all these people who, who teach against stories, so my, my question is, and uh, they all complain there are no, no money in this job, in that being around. So ch change the job, go in, uh, go sell uh, mortgages, make uh, seven times more. Oh yeah, Rabbi, I, w I want to ask you, let's say, let's say there's a shul, and uh, then, you know, uh, uh, I'd say 70% of the people aren't Shomer Shabbos, so then you see them caring, okay? Yes. Now, how, how big of a problem is it that, you know, let's say, you know, the rabbi gives a small 20-minute lecture during the Shabbos, so on and so forth, during Shabbos. Yeah. But before the lecture, he gives everybody, you know, uh, you know like uh, plant, pamphlets with a small, you know, uh, hidush on them. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, Let's say you you were a rabbi in that uh, synagogue. Yes, yeah. W would you do that or no? I, I would not do it. Okay. It, it's a clearly whatever you you say. It's a clearly putting stumbling block in front of the blind. Mm -hmm. If they decide it, like uh, like uh, in one of the shows that they go, one guy guy comes on Shabbos with a with a with, with a backpack. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has his siddur, his uh, but but he like with a backpack. I don't know you. you if if you wanna carry, there is an aid of that, right? Just carry some, I don't know, like talis bag, something like respectable, not not with a backpack. Uh -huh. not with, uh, the school kids could get. Maybe, maybe he's smart. Board. Maybe he's smart. He knows they're not gonna read it in the first place, so they won't take it. You know. <laughs> I mean, uh, why why does it have to be done on Shabbos? As Rabbi Mizrahi sometimes say, so so they say if I don't invite them. They're not going to come. They're not going to experience Shabbos. So if you invite them Motzi Shabbos. That was what we do sometimes, like mm -hmm. especially before like all of these things, right? So especially in the winter. So Shabbos ends like 4 p.m. So you you come like five, whatever. So at six, you you can ask somebody to come at six. So mm -hmm. you have the Lama Malka meal, enjoy, it, right? So you don't, don't have to be on Shabbos. Do you? You don't have to like uh, uh, let them drive on Shabbos because of you. I mean. You understand? Oh. So that's that's why I said I, I, I would not survive this rabbi for, I don't know, three hours. Three mm. hours. I mean, you, you have to speak up. Of course, you have to be careful. Like, uh, like for example, this issue is caring. So it is a rabbinical. You, you have to understand. So oh. it says that you're not allowed. We, we, we're going to get in laws of Shabbos. Uh, oh. So you, you're not allowed to care in a public domain. But the public domain, so definition of the public domain, so... Uh, it says that uh, 600,000 people pass in one day. That's the definition of the public domain, and it's like a long street without ends. It's not, it's not crooked, this and that. have to be such a uh, whiz. I don't remember. 20 amas more. I don't remember. Like a uh, like pretty wide street. So they say uh, most of our people, uh, most of our streets do not qualify. Maybe Fifth Avenue, maybe Broadway in New York, maybe some like huge streets in a big uh, city. But most of the streets do not qualify like as biblical public domain. But our, our rabbi said that there is a uh, there is thing as a Carmelist, and Carmelist is not like semi public domain. Mm -hmm. so it's not. It's like our our streets. I would say like local streets. Six hundred thousand people don't come, uh, don't, don't travel. Right? It's it's semi public and stuff. Like that. But they say we're going to go stricter. That's a like a fence around the Torah, and we're going to treat this Carmelist. Which is not a semi-public domain, as a public domain, meaning in a case of need, in the case of the sick person and stuff like that, if he cannot uh, walk without a cane, so we allow him to go with a cane and stuff like that, and uh, in, in case of the need. 
because it's uh, rabbinical and stuff like that. So rabbi said yes, and rab uh, rabbi said I'm sorry, no. But the, uh, the same rabbi said in such a such circumstances there are exceptions. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, know, you understand? So but basically, I, I want to, to point out that it's not the biggest issue. Like, uh, I, I was, uh, I, I, I'm working with some people. Right? So the, the guy is intermarried. So to, 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 to tell him about Canon, so, and uh, I mean, the, the guy asked me, I almost fell, I, I was dumbfounded. He said, uh, what if I'm wearing a Rabbeinu Tau? I said, I'm not wearing the Rabbeinu Tau, why are you asking? I said, okay. I, I, I saw what Mr. Brewer, I should have said about people like that. Right? So he said, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm contemplating to do it. You understand? So in his, he wants to do over, but the basic, like in another base, the most important thing that they wanted to, to resolve. So for me to talk talk to him about this Rabbi Natami, it's like useless. Got it, got it. Right? You understand? So we try, but, uh, but do, do not let it go. Do not uh -huh. let it go. Be, be, be persistent and do not do, and and remember there is no support from these clouds none <laughs> zero if if anything if anything they would be the first to throw you under the bus so so don't turn you back to them you understand so i have this experience from many of them unfortunately okay. i mean it's a it's a it's a reality of life so a question so some of these people use the excuse, you know, if we didn't invite them, they would be doing more of errors. Uh, so to what extent can this excuse be used? Uh, um, more better for, for example, if you invite somebody, right, you say, please come to my house, uh -huh. and, uh, but please stay over. Not, uh -huh. Do not say maybe if you want to stay over. No, no, no. Please stay over and send them a picture. This is your room. I, uh, uh, clean, clean sheets, not everything nice. So he's a towel, this is this, and uh, he's the slippers. You can, please stay with us, the false shadows. Uh, got and it. he said, okay, okay, I'm coming. And then, uh, like, in, uh, in uh, 10, 10 p.m., he said, you know what, tomorrow I have to work, I have to meet my uh, Jewish girlfriend from the airport, and I said, no, Shabbat. He said, no, I'm leaving. Okay, so well, what could you do? Uh -huh. But second time, you cannot invite, you, you cannot buy this, you understand? Got it, got it. And it's like, don't, the, like Rabbi Mizrahi said many times, there is no need to be stupid. So in business, everybody's smart. But here, in the, with the, the most important thing, like your uh, eternity, everybody played dumb. Got it. Uh, well, last question. Uh, I, I asked Rabbi Ruben, I asked, you know, the, I asked two senior rabbis from the Kolel, and then they said, go ask this rabbi, ask this rabbi. But I just wanted the, the people to hear the question, and I want to know the answer. Go ahead. So, for example, uh, uh, I told you about the Kiddush at home, so on and so forth, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, the question goes like this. Let's say I do uh, Kiddush at home at, after Plakamenko, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, that means that I accept Shabbos with my family at, let's say, 6, 6 o'clock, 5, 6 o'clock. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, this way... They they have two two more hours to do more averas, more breaking Shabbos. But let's say we do it at nine, just as an example. Let's say we do it at nine. Mm -hmm. Now my brother, he he's almost one hundred percent going to invite his fiance, and she's going to drive here. So if I do the five six o'clock, she won't have to drive uh, to Kiddush. Uh, it's not going to be an avera to drive to Kiddush because she didn't accept Shabbos yet. But if it's at nine o'clock, she is one hundred percent breaking Shabbos by driving here. So which one is better? Six o'clock and my family has more time to do Averas, or nine o'clock and she drives. But uh, when when you say that they're going to do more more Averas, can you can you explain what kind of Averas? Uh, I, mean, I mean, just normal Averas breaking Shabbos. If you do Kiddush at six o'clock. They accept Shabbos with you, turning on the yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so they're going to watch uh, TV, for example, right? Yeah. So, so the question is, who do you have to care about? About your family? I mean, she. she you see, I, they, I. I'm just speaking out loud. Right? Thinking out loud, right? So, like, she. Maybe she's going to come. Maybe she's not going to come. No, 100% she's going to come, 100%. No, no, let's say she got sick, she's on vacation, she okay. got, like, her grandmother called, all right, so, so it's, uh, 
there in some instances she's not going to come. Okay. But the family for sure is there. So so there is one maybe and uh, three three for sure. Okay. At least two. Let, let's say two two for okay. sure. So I I would say uh, don't do it as a plug of income. But let's but say you your logic, I think it's absolutely correct. But let's say she's one hundred percent coming. That's that's the problem because my my mother wants everybody to you know come over. She everything. So what, what's better? On another hand, so I, I I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not giving you answers. So I, I'm not just trying no. to think out loud. You put me on the spot. So I, no, no problem. Uh, I'll, I'll no, no, answer I mean, that Rabbi Rubin said afterwards. A, yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay, let let me see the, the way I see. On another hand, it says that if Rashaim I wanna uh, do awareness, like if they wanna drink poison, he can stop 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 the poison into their throat. It's not because of you. On one hand. On other hand, it's like because of you, they they start earlier. So whatever your mother wants, I mean, uh, uh, I would say, let her make a kiddush, or let, let your brother make kiddush. Uh, read it in English. Okay. So you you say amen. You 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 don't accept. And uh, okay. Uh huh. So so this this so, is. And you so, so one, one second. Let, 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 okay. You you eat it as as a dinner. Actually, okay. you. You cannot eat dinner. It's it's too late. It's it's too late for a dinner. You're right. I don't know. I don't know. So this is this is the answer. Now all everybody agrees. Ask like five rabbis. Everyone agrees. Plaka mecha. That's for sure. Even if it's guaranteed that uh, the fiance comes. Why? Now Rabbi Reuven and the rabbis that I ask give two different answers. Rabbi Reuven says, if you do it earlier. Then they're gonna think, oh, it's 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 much easier to do Shabbos. It's not that hard. And then they're gonna do more this way. That okay. okay. But the answer that uh, I got from the other rabbis is make if you make make kiddush beforehand or make it quietly so that they don't hear, so that you're the only one accepting Shabbos and they're not accepting Shabbos. Do kiddush before they come into the room. That way they accept Shabbos at let's say you know eight o'clock whenever it starts. And I accept Shabbos for me. In, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure why would they say that. In their mind, mm -hmm. in their mind, you did Kiddush or they, you did not do Kiddush, the Shabbos started. In their mind. Why? Because, I mean, that, 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 that's how the, the, the mind works. I mean, uh, you, you, why? The whole purpose of this meal. It's not somebody's birthday or uh, I don't know Fourth of July. The purpose of this meal is uh, is uh, is uh, accepted of Shabbos. For right? me, so now, I mean, no, 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 for for them. I I'm not talking about you. For them, uh, you you is 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 understandable. Them for them that that's the, the reason they got together. No, they they had the they had the same question. Now they reached this answer. They said for you yes because you're constantly keeping Shabbos, but for them. They're not constantly keeping Shabbos. They're all, they, they don't even care about Shabbos. So it doesn't even count as a Shabbos meal for them. For you it does, but because they're uh, not uh, Shimmer Shabbos or anything like that, and they're doing the Averis constantly, for them they don't care about the Shabbos meal. For them it doesn't count. But for you, that's your intent. For them they don't have the intent or anything. But how? I'm, I'm not sure. For them it's... No, but... but, 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 but no, but but you, you understand my my point that that's the the, the, the whole purpose the, the whole like in their mind they they don't come into to just uh, Thursday dinner they they come on Friday night why because uh, it's acceptance of the Shabbos so how can they I mean I don't know the the way my parent the way my family sees it in their mind is family dinner the way I see it is kiddush <laughs> that's that's the difference. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so for them, it's not Shabbos. They they don't see it as a Shabbos. Not at all. Okay, but but you didn't tell me this. I mean, I I, I thought that the whole oh. point is for Friday night. The whole thing no. is get together for sh uh, accepting of the Shabbos. No. No. Kiddush, I'll still do, of course. For uh, but does it apply to them? I don't think so. Especially okay. if I. Don't have it. So, but in in Kiddush, as as we learned, so uh, the, there are two things. When, when you when you uh, want to motivate somebody, uh -huh. right? So they they have to have in mind uh -huh. to be included in your kiddush, 
and you have to have in mind include them in, in your case. Mm -hmm. So if one link is missing, mm -hmm. then if, if if you don't have in mind to uh, to include them in your case, they're not included. Exactly. So still block America, then it works because that way they don't do yeah. extra of errors for two hours. Yes. And uh, same thing, same thing. Yes. So. yes. So you see, we figured out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think this. So tell tell this ra rabbis, whatever you are concerned. I think that this is the best explanation. I think. Uh huh. This uh, because in, when you make in kiddush, you're not including them in your kiddush. No. So you're you're right. They said basically the same thing. Because why did they say say quietly or uh before? No, even out loud. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm doing it for for myself. Who is included? Only me. That's it. So you can say out loud. I know, I know, but they're gonna they're by accident or something gonna say a main, and then it's gonna be a big oops or something. It's it's not gonna no, go. No, good. no, no. This this I mean I mean uh, this I mean is uh, is for uh, for uh, for a wine. So you you make a blessing on wine. They say a main. So that, that there is no problem. And then after the next bracha, you you say that uh, Hashem created the world and all of these things, and they say a main. So I mean that's uh, just I mean. If you if you eat an apple and you said that blessing an apple, right? I, I'm I'm not going to get satiated because because you eat it. I mean, what is the connection? Uh -huh. That's what I mean to, to your blessing. Correct, correct. Right? Or, or if if you put in tefillin, you put put in tefillin. You said bless on tefillin. Does it count if I answer? I mean, does it count as I put the bless? No, does not count. Uh -huh. no. The the point is there has to be a way for kiddush not to count for them. That yeah. that's the main that, idea. That, that's that is straightforward. Whatever I told you, it's straightforward. Uh huh. Got it. But, but you in your mind and you you, you can check in that uh, Radius and Shabbos book. In your mind, you don't include them in your kiddush. That's it. Uh -huh. Got yeah. it. And and one more question. This this I I really no, want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So about uh the priestly blessing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My question is, it said, you know, for Kiddush, uh, you're allowed to have everyone in mind, even though they don't have, you know, wine in front of them, for example. Yeah. But for the priestly blessing, one Cohen can say it and the others have the intent to bless everybody else. That can't happen. Say, I think it. Say, say oh, it again. One Cohen, right? Oh, all, yeah. Yeah. all the Quran have to give the bracha. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like the way we can do for Kiddush, where only one person has to say it. So the coin comes out, let's say on, on holidays, rather than on Shavuot. Yes. So he comes out and he bless everybody. So when he blesses, there is intention to, to, to bless everybody. And everybody knows what's going on. So they they intention, they recover the style, and they, they all position themselves. So in, in order to get blessed, so there is no contradiction. No, I... This is the point. So all the all the kahanim have to bless the people. Okay. So let's say there's one kohen who says it, and then there are forty nine other kahanim who are there, but have the intent to bless everybody else. Okay. So I want to say they don't 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 go up and to bless people. They they stay. They, uh, they, they don't speak. They don't speak. They don't speak. They have the intent. Like for kiddush, we have the intent to accept. No, but, but, uh, you see the. The blessing, it's, it's not like well, when the, the 49 Kahanim are going to bless, it's going to be a bigger blessing. It's exactly I agree. The blessing. I mean, it, 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 it looks better when many people do it, but uh, you, you're going to get exactly the same blessing. I agree, it's the same bracha. But the thing is, the 49 Kahanim aren't giving the bracha, only that one ka the Kohen. Yeah, 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 okay. Exactly. So my question is, now, what about, is this case different than... Let's say there's a, a, a Kohen and he gives a bracha to a, a deaf person. Now, the deaf person that hear the bracha, does he still receive it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the bracha comes from Hashem through his hands, right, to, to the Kohen's hands on, on the person. It's a matter. He, he heard it or didn't, didn't hear it. Uh -huh. they, they, they even say when, when Kohanim are blessed, we, we're going to, to, to get in Kisur Shalhanor, I, I think. So they even uh, even I mean the people who who are in uh, like uh, somewhere else, uh -huh. like all of the women and children that do not come to the shul usually they do uh -huh. not come to the shul. They they all, also like have in mind all of these people they do not they didn't come to the shul. They also included. But the the problem is, for example, in last week's parsha it says you know 
the Kahanim have to, uh, you know, say it loudly and say it to all the people. Yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So they have to say it to, uh, basically we'll say each one separately. Just, you know, they have to emphasize it's for you, not uh, for every single one of them. Okay. Now, the thing is, if only one of them says it, it doesn't end up being that way. Because uh, let's say if one says it, then the others might not hear it, for example. You know, it's a big congregation, everything like that. Yeah. So it, it leads down to one thing. Now, when the Kahana, when the one Kohen gives the bracha to all the people and the people don't hear it, it's the Kahanim's fault, okay? Because well, the, the rest of the 49, okay. But I, I, don't, I don't think it, it comes uh, with the voice. The, the bracha comes, I mean, uh, you, he, of course, you, you have to hear the voice, uh, like, like whatever he pronounced, but the, the bracha comes like, uh, like electro waves. Okay. Through, through his hands. I mean, that, that's, that's what yeah. I mean. It's proper, of course, it's proper. Is uh, the the the, the says uh, not very good things about Kahanim who do not go up the bless and bless or the, the bless uh, wrongly and stuff like that. But uh, but still, if 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 only one like a huge shoe, I understand exactly what you're saying. The, like uh, I don't know, two thousand people like huge shoe, mm -hmm. right? And he he's speaking of course. I mean, he's elderly. He's ninety eight years old. He's elderly person. He cannot uh, like his voice is, is weak. So, but, but still, they're getting the blessing. There, there is no problem. Right. So the, the problem is Kahanim, why they didn't do it. The problem is them. But there is no problem with the people that they, they, they go to the Bracha. I don't think it's But then you have to tell me why, for example, for Kiddush, we're allowed to just have an intent. But for uh, the priestly blessing, all the Kahanim have to actually say it. They can't just have intent. No, no. But, but with Kiddush, you, you, you also have to say out loud. The words must Only one person has to say it. No, no. What's that? The, the words must uh, must be said out loud in Kiddush and in, uh, in, uh, in a blessing. So he cannot come to to the stage and just look and think and uh, well, well, contemplate and then just uh, come down. It's not going to work. I so agree. It's Kiddush. So it's Kiddush. But for Kiddush, only one person has to say it and it still yes. counts. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, for... so, like, exactly. So so we, we want to give all of the Kakani like a privilege. I apologize. I didn't get this. Uh, so now, now I, I hope I got your uh, question. Uh -huh. So it, it's, it's their privilege to go up and bless people. Uh -huh. It's like everybody looking up or they, they actually forbidden to look at them and they have to go to the stage. And it says clearly in Shofan Oleks, so uh, if coin can, if cannot go up for whatever reason, he, he should ex exit the, the show. He should not be there because if, if he uh, stays in his seat, Right, everybody go, go, go up like one person, as you said, go up, and the rest of Kahan, like one family, do that. So, we uh, uh, people would say there is something wrong with their family, maybe their mom's dead, maybe there's um, maybe the, their father married somebody that he's not allowed to marry. Mm -hmm. I understand, yeah. you understand. So, there is halal, there is uh, halal mm -hmm. or halal. Uh, so, the, 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 the last name is coin, the father. Can do spiritual blessing, but since uh, he married somebody that he's not allowed to marry, so all of the children, uh, they're not, uh, they're not calling him. Got it. So my question boils down to this: Why, uh, we both agreed uh, that uh, the Cohen can give a bracha to the to a deaf person and it still counts, but why, uh, if the Kohanim have intent during the priestly blessing, it doesn't count? Uh, it, in, in, in ten itself, so if, for, for example, if if we don't have even one person who speaks, so it does not count. But if once the person speaks, it's it's enough. So the intent is useless. I mean, the, the, the bracha is going to come through one person. No, I, I agree. But the thing is, when the one person gives it to everybody else, yes. it's not as a 50 kohanim give it. Like, let's say everybody has intent, but only one person says it. Only one kohen says it. Okay. The bracha only comes from one kohen. But, but it's still still the same amount of bracha. It, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's, it's like you have a huge vessel and then you, you, you put one spout or you have 50 spouts. It, it's exactly the same the same amount uh, that is going to come out. I completely agree. But the question isn't about that. The question is, the other 49 kahanim, they didn't fulfill their obligation. Yes, correct. I, I, I agree. I agree 100% with you. It's, it's, the problem is with them. But but the, the rest of the people are not going to lose. I, I I completely agree. Yeah. So the 49 Kahanim, 
they don't feel, fulfill their obligation. Correct. But when Kiddush people do fulfill their obligation. No, 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 no. One sec, one sec. If, what if, if, when? No, no. How, how they did they not fulfill the obligation? In what case? Please explain. I'm uh the Quranum? The Quran? No, 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 the the Kiddush people. I, I got well, I'm saying I'm saying for Kiddush they did fulfill their obligation if only one person says it. Yes. If one person says it during Kiddush, it's as if all of them said it, if they all hear and have intent. Yes. But for the blessing of the Kahanim, if one person says it, it's uh, the bracha, it's, and everybody else has intent, it's not as if all the Kahanim said the bracha, it's still as if one of them said the bracha, but it's yes. different for Kiddush. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So my question is, why is it different over there than over here in Kiddush? Than because uh, Halakha, you see, like... Uh... In Kiddush, we, we said only one person, any person is, uh, is can do it. But uh, in a, in a priestly blessing, Hashem said that I, I, I love my Kahanim so much, I want be, them to be special. Even mm -hmm. though we, we don't have a base amigdash today, so they can, one of the things they can, can, can do, especially now in exile, like uh, what else they can do? We, we call them to, to the Torah first. If he's uh, like a Torah scholar, he can do Birchas Hamazon, even though there is like uh, other more important people, but he's, uh, we, we give uh, him privilege to do, and uh, and the blessings, uh, what else? I mean, there, there are some minor uh, things that you cannot ask him to do work for you and stuff like that, but uh, but uh, that, that's uh, the, the, the privilege, Hashem assigned special privilege to them. So as you said, if they don't do it, the problem is on them. So meaning that somebody gives you a gift and you throw it like on a shelf. Somebody like work for this, uh, uh, no, not you. You're not going to do it. But other person, you, you know, he he threw it in the garbage. Like like you you worked the whole summer and you 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 gave us somebody a gift and then they go ah this whatever. Uh -huh. no, I I might be wrong, but for example, uh, for Kiddush, the the difference between Kiddush and the, uh, the blessing for the Kohanim. Now, for Kiddush, it counts as if everyone said it because it's not like they're all saying Kiddush. To someone else, they're not. But during the blessing of the condom, they're telling it to the children of Israel. So, is that a reason why they actually have to say it? Because the, uh, someone else actually has to hear it. Now, over there, only one person during Kiddush, only one person has to hear it because they're saying it to everybody around. But the other people don't have to hear it because they're not telling it to anybody else. They don't need to tell it to anybody else. But during the blessing of the condom. One person can't say it because everybody, all the children of Israel, have to hear the blessing. Okay. From each of the Kahanim. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's uh, let's go. Let's do a step back. So basically, about this, uh, what, what do you say about about the Kiddush? That there is a rule. Just, just to clarify, you oh. said correctly. Just just to clarify, there is a rule that hearing is like uh, like when you answer with hearing with the intention. And you answer, it's like you said it yourself. So, and I mean, you, that, that's what, what you meant, correct? So, well, yeah. even though that they, they listen, it's like they sing. Mm -hmm. But this obligation is, is on each and every one the person around the table. Uh -huh. So, if, if you're not going to do it, so he says, like uh, your, your mother come to your brother, like uh, fiance, whatever, some, somebody have to do it. All, all, all of them are obligated. But you exclude them. From from the like, no, next, you include them in your uh, in your uh, saying of the kiddush. Mm -hmm. You exempt uh, the word is exempt. You by uh -huh. you deciding, but they obligated. But in the case of the kahanim, only kahanim can do. And other people, I I I am not going. I cannot do the priestly blessing. Exactly, but my question isn't about uh not a cohen a cohen can't uh, a non cohen can't do the priestly blessing. I'm saying. For example, all the children of Israel have a special obligation to do Kiddush, okay? Yes, yes, correct. Yes. And only one child of Israel has to do Kiddush for everybody else to... Uh, no, no, no. Not necessarily. Like, if, if, if they want, if they want. So everybody can do their own Kiddush. But, but op optionally, the all you need is one, correct? Yes, correct, correct, yes, correct. I'm saying it's different for the Kahanim. Let's say you have 50 Kahanim. All of them have the same obligation to do the priestly blessing. The same obligation. Like they, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. I, I see, no, no, it's not, okay, I see your question. So why one cannot say it for, for all of them? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's I, I see, no, no, I see, I see, I see. I see. Uh, 
So basically, you you say so the, the skittish so one can uh, include all others. Yes. So one can one one coin cannot. Include, I mean, he can include. I mean, that we, we see that that he he actually can include, but still they're obligated to say. So this rule that is here is like the, uh, an answer is like you're saying yourself is not working with Kahani because it's a separate obligation on each and every coin, and they cannot pass. They cannot delegate it to another coin if they want. If they if guys seek and this and that, he he can leave and don't like step out of the shoot, go to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, and that's it. Correct. It's a separate obligation. So the each and every coin. Yes, exactly. So the people have to hear the blessing from each and every one of the Kahan, not from no, one. No, no, with, with whatever Kahanim that are going to bless. I mean, they, 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 they don't have to like walk in the street and find every no. coin and ask them to bless. No, I, not... I'll phrase it a bit better. I'm saying that during the priestly blessing, in the shul, not on the street, yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. in the shul, each a person in the congregation has to hear it from every mouth of the condom, not from one condom on... No, 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 no. whatever they're going to go up in time and bless. So basically, so <clears throat> the, there is a special uh, place in a, in, in a prayer, let's say, I guess. So when, 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 when they say the, this words, it says in Shulchan Aruch, the Kahanim have to start moving their feet. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they have to be close uh, to, to, to the stage where, where they're going to... to to bless people, otherwise it's going to be too late. So we, we cannot uh, make the congregation wait. Co so correct. If he's late, for example, if he's late, so he's out. They're not going to let, let him bless. Correct. I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it even better. All the condom on the stage, on the stage, right? Yeah. Doing the thing. Yeah. I'm saying that all the people in the congregation have to hear the blessing from each one of the condom. No, no. I mean, uh, it's opposite. All of the Kahanim have to bless the people. If uh -huh. they're going to do it or not, it's it's, it's on their head. Uh -huh. I mean, if 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 I'm being if I I'm being blessed, and uh, the forty nine Kahanim and uh, forty eight does not want to bless, uh, whatever. They, they they mute, they ate whatever whatever they ate, and they don't feel good. They cannot bless them. Still, it's going to go through one person. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But but the mitzvah is uh, of course it's better when they when they like uh, when if you ever go. When, no, not when you, when you go to to, uh, uh, to Israel and if you go to the Western Wall and you see this blessing on Kahani, I don't know how many, like maybe a few thousand Kahani. few thousand people are going to bless you simultaneously. You, 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 you're shaking inside. You understand? you understand? Just from the voice of this. It's okay. unbelievable. And, and the, the echo, it's unbelievable experience. That's the proper way. So, but but the, the obligation is on them. I don't know who is coin, I, and I'm I'm not obligated to hear every coin. One coin, one like, I, even if I don't hear blessing, I'm still blessed. Got it. So uh, the, the only thing you have to be like, if you wanna like in a shoe, you you, you cannot be behind him. So all, all the people that are behind the coin, they're not going to get blessed. So uh -huh. you have to move forward. So be in front of his uh, uh, arms. Got it. Understood. Understood. So, uh, last, last thing, small thing. So, for example, with the deaf person, correct? The Quran gives a blessing to the deaf, deaf person. Okay. Now, the deaf per the deaf person doesn't have uh, he let's say he doesn't even uh, have the intent of bracha being given or something like that, right? Now, what's the reason that for the deaf person the bracha still counts for the uh, the bracha is bestowed? Because the, the, the bracha comes from Hashem. So it doesn't matter, you heard these words, you, you understood the words, you, you did not understand the words. You, you see, I mean, it, it, it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I mean, through, it, it, you, they pronounce the words, but they just uh, because they pronounce uh, the words, it does not mean the bracha is going to come. Uh -huh. It's realistic. So all this, uh, I know many, many Kohen, even there, none of them are Shomer Shabbos. Uh -huh. Got it. So, uh, so I, I spoke to one of these clown rabbis. I <laughs> say, how come uh, you, you, you cannot let, let him bless? But this guy, big guy, you know, so so if he has this huge voice and he and, and he likes to sing. And so he comes only for uh, for for on the holidays. You understand? For for him is a, a one man show. So I came to this rabbi. I said, you normal? How would you? Know? He gave uh -huh. me explanation and he said I need to go stuff like that. 
you're not allowed. Like the, this, uh, the, the, this is uh, kill Hashem. Got it. So the the main reason that uh, during the priestly blessing it counts, but for the deaf person uh, it doesn't count when you know uh, the the forty nine other condom don't get the mitzvah. But for the one condom, even though the deaf person didn't hear it, he does. Yeah. Is because those forty nine, the the reason that the uh, the bracha didn't happen, it, uh, or you know uh, the mitzvah wasn't fulfilled, was because of the because it was the condom's fault. Okay. Yes. But the reason for the deaf person, it wasn't the condom's fault. It was more that they didn't hear it. Yes. It was the deaf person's fault. So the it's, it's, it's not his fault. It's not the, I mean, he, he yeah, it, it, yeah. But it wasn't the fault of the condom. It wasn't the exactly, fault. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the brother still counts. Yeah. I, okay, yeah. got it, got it, got it. Okay, understood. Okay, you you clear? I, did I answer? Everything is great. Everything is great. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so, so that's why, and uh, that's why what uh, this quality I like in you very much that you're not shy. It says a shy person who does not uh, is uh, who does not ask questions. He is going to go to Gehenna. Uh -huh. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, so Gemara, you normal? How can you, the, the guy is shy? He's not answering. The, he doesn't want to because he's going to draw wrong conclusions. So uh -huh. if you have question, so ask. If I didn't answer you, like if I you you don't understand my answer, ask me again. Right? Uh -huh. Maybe I didn't get your question. Maybe this, or like uh, you see, <laughs> we read uh -huh. it from all of these different angles. Uh -huh. I mean, the, 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 it's not like yeah, yes or no question. It's not. Mm -hmm. Not all right. So let's uh, learn a little at least. Yes. So Bizrat uh, Hashem, continue. <clears throat> right. So and please always like like you you did right now. Try to make sure that you understand and ask as many questions and do not say I agree and, uh, unless you agree. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sir? Okay, so thank you very much for uh, not letting me, let, not saying that you agree from the first time, even when I did not answer your question. Very nice. All right. So continue. So we are uh, still on the topic of tif, uh, Tifilin. We are in uh, sim, Simon number 10. And uh, Sif is 24. Okay. So it says a miner who knows how to properly absorb the condition of the tefillin, there is do not pass gas while wearing them, and not to fall asleep while wearing them. His father is obligated to bite him uh, to bite tefillin for him, so he may put them on. Now, however, the custom has become widespread that miner begins to put tefillin two or three months uh, before he becomes thirteen years of old and not earlier. So in olden day the age, uh, I guess they did early, but today we do only from from 13 years old. A right, few months before, like you start training, but uh, but uh, that's it. So commentaries say we assume that before this time he is not mature enough to absorb the the above mentioned condition of wearing tefillin. Okay, see Mishnah Okay. Nowadays there are very custom. That absorb regarding the same time, uh, regarding the time that minor, minor begins to wear well feeling. Some put them on three months before they become bar mitzvah, some, um, some, um, some one month before, and others uh, only one uh, on a day. A boy actually turns 13. Each person should follow his custom. So um, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I mean, but the way I understand. So one day is not going to be enough to train him to do it properly. So, like if a month or I don't know one week, I mean it's not a rocket science to put it feeling, but at least you have to like get used to. I would say like one month and or I don't know one week, two weeks should be like uh, should be enough to accustom him. Okay, continue. Uh, see if twenty five. Uh, the days of Shabbos and Yom Tov uh, serve as a voice, a sign of the relationship uh, between Hashem and Jewish people. There, uh, there is therefore no mitzvah to wear tefillin on these days, and the sign of tefillin, and you shall bind them on a sign, is not needed. 
So as um, I mean, of course, you know, but I'm not going to say because we're recording. So uh, all all the time we have to have two uh, two uh, two signs in my name, right? So uh, what is the signs? Uh, it's uh, our circumcision is one sign, right? I would fill in a second sign, and Shabbos is a third sign. So the, during the week you have your circumcision, you have your fill in, and uh, uh, signs that, that you're kosher Jew, basically. And uh, on Shabbos, uh, you, you have Shabbos as a sign, you observe on Shabbos, and you have so your circumcision, so there is no need for uh, for filling of Shabbos. I mean, the, the person wants to learn the, the laws of filling, so it's not muktzah. Let's say that they can move filling, but and, uh, most of the people do not learn the laws of filling of Shabbos. I mean, you can, if, if you see that the person only one day, if, if you want to train somebody to put on, to, not to put like, uh, to, to, to say like, uh, to tell him the, the laws of tefillin, and uh, he has uh, he's going to be bar mitzvah soon, and you, you you only come in there once a month in this case, so you can tell him, of course. Qu so you... Question about the tefillin. Now, uh, it's a little off topic, off topic, but I remember Rabbi Rubin said, uh, you know, he gave a story about one can't wear tefillin during Torah study, right? Uh, because, you know, why, why? why? Be because, because, He's gonna view everybody else as much lower than him. Oh, okay. So it's a now, no, no, now you're, you're doing okay. Yes. No, no. One second. One second. Let, let's clarify the the story. He's allowed. He's allowed. No, no, but no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. So in 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 many schools, what, what they do, they learn like uh, I don't know, fifteen, twenty minutes after the, the yes, the, yes. The, the so everybody sit around the table is spinning thousand. There's no problem, but one only, or at least rabbi. So, but if if the, the, he's the only person, so he's like uh, think of him that he's extra tzaddik. You're right. You're right. Yes. yes. That's what I mean. So I'm saying, what about let's say someone really wants to learn with the film? Let's just say, is he allowed? Let's say he's still in call and everything. Is he allowed to let's say you know go to uh, I don't know a private room there, something like that, other than learn with the film? Allowed? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. No problem, no problem. Just, okay. just uh, as I say, watch yourself. So uh, have a clean body and stuff like that. There is no problem. Or if you, you want to, to learn at home and stuff, like that, there is no problem. Got I mean, the, so the, the, what, what, what Rabbi ruined the, the way I understand, but what he was saying that uh, so if if it makes you like uh, like uh, a, a little proud, like uh, uh -huh. you think that you're better, that's not allowed. And yes. that's exactly what Hal Shulchanok and Mishma Drua ex mm -hmm. uh, explained that uh, about uh, um, Rabbeinu Tam Tfilin. So mm -hmm. and, and unless he's uh, known in the community as a righteous person, so mm -hmm. and he, if he's not exactly there, he's uh, uh, half and half, and then now he puts the Rabbeinu Tam, so uh, the, the word is pretentious. Like, you? Like, you, you would be extra tzaddik? Just, just, just leave you non-Jewish girlfriend. For now, just, just start with that. Don't, wow. don't go. Don't do this thrilling. And in my, in so in my like, unfortunately, in my practice, like not, not practice, in my my experience, I, I'm trying not to look. So all all of them, the people, I, I'm sure. I mean, unfortunately, that's uh, in the shows that I go. Most of the people that, that put uh, this rabbeinu are pretentious. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, not all of them, but uh, I would say maybe eighty-seven percent of them. Got it. So still on the topic of pride, let's say you're learning somewhere and you were alone, okay? Yeah, there is no problem. And, uh, let's, uh, let's say without the film you were learning, let's, let's say, and you were reading a book, this, that, everything. And uh, then people start coming in, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, then, you know, nobody's, nobody's reading, you know, everybody, everybody saw you reading this, that, everything. Ooh, ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh. And uh, then you become prideful, okay? Let's say, uh, uh, now, is it the Yitzhahara trying to stop you from reading and then go somewhere else and waste your time? Or should you continue reading? You see, it, it, it depends on the person. So if he becomes prideful for one second, but uh, he, he's, he, he understand that, uh, that, that he's not there yet, that he's uh, on a lower level, and he's trying to maybe it is a better concentration to fill in on, right? And he, he feels more holy. Right, so there is no problem. So just fight with your eight but 
if you if, if that person thinks that he's higher than other everybody else that's the problem uh -huh. got it and, got it understand but from, from my experience like all this rabbinic time I, I, the, <laughs> some some people like uh, i don't know hasidim they like some, uh, some not all of them but some hasidim put rabbinic time like uh, if it's like standard custom stuff like that but if, if you're not there so mo most of the people put Rabbeinu Tam with Shulchan Aruch said, absolutely not. Do not put Rabbeinu Tam when they're in the middle of Shmona Esri. That's exactly what they put with them. Do not remove your tefillin when, when, when they, they, they have Torah learning, Torah read. Do not. So it, that's exactly when they change the tefillin. You understand? Uh -huh. so if you want to do that, better not, never do it. Never, ever. One second, uh, never put it uh, once in your life. Got it. If, if you're not in rush, you can do after praying that you have extra time so yeah so, uh -huh. so that's um but but it, it comes it, it goes into people's head and they they, they see this guy as a, as a big tzaddik you know like mikubal minimum and mm -hmm. uh and, and 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 it it gets into his head you understand that's uh the big issue okay continue mm -hmm. uh actually my my mother's calling me so i think i have to leave okay, okay. So, so we, we start from 25. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Good night. Until tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.